We all know that to get good at penetration testing, hacking, CTFs, or cybersecurity in general, then you need to put in the work. But what can we do beyond following courses and solving boxes to really improve? How do we take our skills to the next level? Well, today we're going to go over three things, actually four because it's a YouTube video and bonus tips are a thing, that you can do to level up your hacking game. Some of these are more approach and mindset focused and others are actually actual tasks and challenges that you can take on. Traditional privileged access management products are ugly, expensive, difficult to deploy, and of course, difficult to use. So that's why I trust Keeper. Keeper Securities next-gen privileged access management solution delivers enterprise-grade password secrets and privileged connection management all in one unified platform. Unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless, and has no implementation. Fees. Plus, Keeper is FedRAMP authorized. Thousands of organizations rely on Keeper to defend against data breaches, and you can start your 14-day free trial today at keeper.io slash TCM. And of course, there is a link in the description below. As always, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So first up, we have developing a research mindset. This doesn't mean diving into an unknown topic for months or years and coming back with something novel. It actually means working on a system, exploit or project without blindly following somebody else's guide. You'll find that while you're working in this way, you'll become much more familiar with whatever it is you're working on, which is much closer to what happens when we're gaining experience in a role. We're learning by doing, not by copying. Now, this isn't to say that learning from others and using guides is wrong. You should definitely use the vast amounts of information and insights available to you. But just remember that you should stay curious, try different things, and especially when it comes to capture the flag, try different methods of exploitation. If you solve a CTF using a guide, then take an extra 10 minutes to explore a different payload, or take a look at the files or configuration of the target system to see why it's vulnerable. A great example of this can be found in the 0xdf beyond root blog posts. They go through the intended solutions for hack the box machines, but they also look at alternative payloads and often dive into code to see why something is vulnerable. But beyond just being curious, here are some habits that you can get into to try and develop this type of mindset. First, we want to try alternative payloads and exploits, even if one has been successful. Next, we need to check Check the target service, configuration or code once we're inside to understand how and why the vulnerability exists. And actually, this is probably the most useful takeaway for this section and a good habit to get into because later down the line, when a team comes back to you and says, hey, you found this vulnerability during your pen test, but we want recommendations beyond just updating to the latest version, for example. Understanding how and why the vulnerability exists means that you can add value to your clients later on. Read exploits to try and figure out what it's actually doing even if it's just at a high level to begin with. And finally, find unintended paths to solve boxes and even craft your own exploit if you're up to it. Obviously, don't do all of this at once and we need to continue to learn new things, but don't neglect your curiosity and try to develop this researcher mindset over time. So next, we have working in complex or networked environments. And working on single machines is a great way to get started when we're building our foundational hacking skills, but pen testing as a job is much, much more than that. We have to be able to work within complex environments and that means being able to pivot, evade, live off the land and generally adapt to our surroundings. If we don't work on these skills we'll find ourselves stuck in the dark corner of some DMZ during a pen test with nowhere else to go and that's no fun at all. So once we've got our pen testing methodology down, I strongly recommend that everybody starts to look into network boxes on TryHackMe or the ProLabs on Hack the Box. And beyond the skills needed to work through these environments, you're likely to improve your note keeping skills since you'll need to stay organized and be able to cross-reference things and spot small connections between different pieces of information originating from different sources. You'll end up scouring boxes for information that you can use elsewhere. And in these kinds of environments, it's the details that count, not your usual find a sus service and keep trying exploits until you get root approach. 
Reefs on Trihackme is a great place to start and then you can take a look at Hollow. Dante is also pretty beginner friendly on Hack the Box and if you're up to the challenge then Rasta Labs is definitely my favourite but a little bit trickier. It might take a few weeks or even months to solve these labs especially if you're not working on them full time, but it's well worth the time investments. When taking on these challenges, I recommend that you have a template for each box so that you don't forget to gather information or miss steps. For example, you could use a post-compromise checklist that might consist of persistence techniques, places to find information like in the recycle bin on Windows or in slash file slash mail on Linux, common configuration files that may contain passwords, and what additional access you might have received etc etc of course the list goes on and over time of course you'll figure out what works for you. So finally, my advice is to specialize in something that you're passionate about. But when I say specialize, I don't mean that that's the only focus from now until the end of time. I just mean it's great to have a topic where you're the go-to person on the team for it. People will appreciate the added insights and it gives you a chance to push your limits even further into an area that you find exciting. If you follow my live streams and content, you'll know that I'm a big fan of code review. And in the past, when my colleagues are stuck on a problem or just wanted a different perspective, they'd often send me code to get my thoughts. Now, the scope of your specialization could be quite broad. Maybe you like to keep up with EDR evasion techniques or browser exploitation, or it could be something a little bit more narrow. So a singular vulnerability like deserialization, for example. In the mind of your interviewer, you're going to be demonstrating that you're passionate and knowledgeable in an area, and it's probably going to make them think one or more of the following things. First, this person is smart and capable and driven. This person has a similar interest to someone on my team and they'd be a great fit. Or this person really cares about what they do. And beyond this, of course, your colleagues will always be thankful for your added insight and support. So pick something fun and make it your own. Now, for my final bonus tip, this is actually something I talk about a lot on stream. Learning to enumerate a service, find an exploit, get it working, and popping a shell is one thing, but understanding the system, how it works, how to secure it, is a completely different ball game. So, building, configuring, and deploying labs or challenges yourself is going to take you way beyond the average CTF player. And one of the biggest things that you'll find is that from doing this, because you'll have knowledge of how your target system works, you'll be better at troubleshooting payloads, chaining attacks together, and abusing intended functionality as part of your attack. If we just rely on lists of known attacks, then anything beyond medium, for example, on Hack the Box is going to be way out of reach. So once you hit the hard boxes, you're going to have to start to understand really what's going on under the hood. And in the real world, during pen tests and working with clients, having a good understanding of the applications that you're working with is going to help you have more productive meetings and ultimately add more value to your service. This is particularly true for Active Directory. In my opinion, the way to get good at attacking and defending AD is to build your own lab, misconfigure it, attack it, harden it, and repeat. It's also worth trying attacks with and without Defender switched on, or maybe with Wazir deployed to see what alarm bells you just set off. And of course, this also gives you a safe place to test new or different attacks rather than just a one-off room where a Metasploit module works and you call it a day. If that exploit fails, when you're on a pen test, you're going to be stuck as to where to go next. And same goes for web apps. You'll learn so much from building your first web application and it will take you from trying payloads from a known list to successfully crafting your own and exploiting more complex or hardened targets. And that's it for today's video. If you want some ideas of projects to try out to try and build some of these skills, then check out this video. And of course, we live stream every Tuesday and Wednesday so feel free to swing by and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Catch you next time.